Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. It's the final reveal of the street art quilt. So if you want to see what this finally came out like, please stay tuned. <laughs> you have been um, following this journey and are really excited to see what this finally came out uh, to look like. If you saw the last video where I took the foundation papers off, you got to see the, uh, the quilt top without the binding. So now it's all the way put together. Um, I do want to say something that I'm really excited about is that I did not purchase anything for this um, wall hanging. All of the backing fabric that you see was from my stash. It was Fat Quarters. This was actually a pretty large piece of fabric. Uh, there were some leftovers from my Bargello quilt that we had the quilts along um, on earlier this year. And even the binding and the batting. I pieced the batting for this, um, for this wall hanging. The binding was in my stash, so I didn't have to purchase anything. Some of the fabrics on the front were uh, some that I won in raffles, some that I um, just accumulated over time that was given to me. So this was a really good process, a real kind of scrap buster as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and then we can talk about it. Here we go. All right. So... Here it is. I hope that you can see all of it. Um, wait, let me see. Uh, it's hanging off of the table, but you can see the whole word magic, hopefully. So let's see. Here's the M, A, G, I here, and C there. Um, again, if you haven't been following along with the process, I took the sheet of um, paper that had the picture on it. I put a um, graph paper over it so it gave me little grids. Each one of these squares was um, was created individually. Some of them, like this one, this was an, um, an entire square. It was a solid square so I didn't have to piece it. But most of the squares in this, um, in this quilt were pieced. Um, someone asked if I wrote a pattern for this and the answer is no, I did not because the pattern, um, each individual square was, um, was pieced and, and like the pattern was made by square. It wasn't made for the whole thing. So um, it's really cool. I'm, I'm super proud of it. I think for me, this was like outside of the box. I didn't think that I would ever be able to create something like this. So um, I'm really proud that I was able to do it. Um, for the quilting, I just did uh, every two rows here going vertically and then every three rows going horizontally. Um, so if I think that maybe if I had added more quilting, it would look um, a little cooler, but I like it this way because the pattern really pops out. Um, there are a few close ups of things that I want to show you things that I won't necessarily say didn't go as well as I would like, but just some um, some alterations that I had to make for the pattern. So I want to um, do a few little close-ups so you can see it. Um, this, let me talk about the binding for a little bit. This binding, it was like cartoon animals or something, jungle animals. But when I cut it down into the binding, I thought it would, um, you know, you don't really know exactly what it is. You can't really see the animals. And it just gives a really nice dark finish to the quilt, which is something that I wanted. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit and um, and see what um, special things happened. The this was one interesting motif throughout this um, quilt, and in the picture there would be hearts with circles around them, and I really like this motif and the way it kind of popped out as I was um, making the patterns. But when I first started, these were pieces that were um, kind of difficult for me to piece and I couldn't figure out what to do. So at first I decided that I would do some top stitching on it and you can see that here. And then you see a little bit of it here, like this one has a raw edge. 
this one um, is top stitched as well because I couldn't figure out how to um, make these blocks work. But as I move forward, um, I didn't take these out and try to do them again because they were already done. So I just left them as they were. But then I started to um, piece in sections. So if we look right next to that one, I go over just a little bit. There we go. So actually there are two of them, the piece above and a piece of side. So these two blocks, I'm going to point them out. Okay. This block here and this block to remedy that problem, I actually decided to make four mini panels. So I divided this part into four sections and then I pieced each part individually. That way I wouldn't have any top stitching. So if you decide to do a project like this, this could be an option for you if say the, the pieces are more challenging or you just can't figure out how to make it work. So for me, um, this worked um, for these two blocks. There are also a few that I've pieced um, that had two sections instead of four. I'll show you a few of those. Let's see. I'll zoom out and then see if where I can find one. Let's see. Okay, so here's one right here. This one. And so you can see the top section is pieced, the bottom section is solid, and something like that. That really helped that block. And then just below it, is a section this one was pieced in two sections so here is one side here is another side and most of the quilt was um pieced just as one like this one this is just one piece by itself but there are several that are pieced either two at a two together or four together like right here okay so if you have that issue if that comes up and you're like i don't know what to do that is definitely an option. Um, I really, like I said before, I was really pleased with the way this came out. Um, as we, I'm just gonna kind of go over the whole thing. I'm holding the camera, which is, it is what it is. Okay, so I love the contrast that happened. Um, another interesting thing that happened in the, um, in the sections from time to time would be if there was a block that overlapped between sections because sometimes um, I forgot what color I was using so I'll show you this I mean it's I think I consider it an artistic statement so you know whatever but it's just something funny that happened so with this one the uh, first two little sections of the block are, um, they were all in panel two and the other side, other part was in panel three. So when I got ready to piece, I actually pieced this side in orange and this side in what I called my dark yellow. Um, but you know, it's not something that you would notice if I hadn't really pointed it out to you. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any more like that. I don't think so. But little things like that, I think they really make the quilt because nobody's going to know unless you tell them that you made a mistake or that you did a little bit of um, artist interpretation. So it's really cool either way. Um, other things that I would um, really consider, the main thing was that my um, backing fabric had a little bit of puckers in it. and But... That's not a big deal. It's, it's just a thing that happens from time to time when you're quilting. Um, but again, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. If you have questions about this process, please leave them in the comments. Also check out the other um, videos about this quilt. I think there are either six or seven, five or six, something like that, other videos that have um, this quilt in them. Um, you can do something like this if you if you want to if you 
you know, don't think that you can't do it. I, I wasn't sure that I could do it until I actually did it, but you can do it. The only other thing that I have to do um, is add a sleeve. And so I'm going to add a hanging sleeve on the back of this and find a wall, hopefully big enough um, that I can put it here in my house. Um, so thank you so much for watching this series. Please thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye!